Hi, for USCFSales.com, I'm Steve Lopez with a Fritz tip for you today. I talk to a lot of people on the phone, via email, friends of mine that own Fritz and Ribco. And by the way, these tips that are about Fritz also apply to Ribco, the, the chest-based version of Ribco 4, as well as Hyrx 13 and Shredder and Junior. I talk to a lot of people who have this software, and they the, the one thing that comes up all the time is, I can't beat it. I don't get a good game against it because as soon as I start trying to figure out what's going on, it drops the bomb and it slaughters me. Well, there's a reason for that. I'm going to show you graphically right here. A lot of people, if they don't want to play a timed game, they'll come here to levels and they'll set a fixed time game. First day, 30 seconds per move. Unfortunately for us mere mortals, 30 seconds a move is going to rip your head off. It doesn't sound like much. But let me show you an example I just did a second ago by clicking the infinite analysis button on and then off again a second later. Notice here down in the engine pane where I stopped Fritz's analysis, it had thought up here at the clock and down here you can see it thought for exactly one second at the start of the game. I didn't, it wasn't using an opening book, I was just having it analyzed just to give you an example. For one second, it looked 14 plies ahead. That's one That's one move for each player 14 times. In other words, seven moves deep. As chess players, we tend to think in move, you know, we think of moves that are actually move pairs. You know, white moves, black moves, that's one move. That's actually two ply. That's what this refers to. 14 individual moves have been made on the board. So it's actually looked seven moves deep. That's seven moves for each player deeply into this position after one second. So you're not going to beat it on a fixed time level. <clears throat> now you may never beat this software anyway unless you play it in a handicap mode. That's what I want to show you over the next few videos is how to set it up where you get a competitive game, you get a good game with it without getting shelled every time you play it. So we're going to click along some of the menus up here at the top until we get to training. And there are a number of different kind of training games that you can set up to play against Fritz. A lot of people like to go to rated game mode. Unfortunately for new players, players that have not been playing chess for very long, rated game mode is probably still going to bust you up. So there are some other things here you can try and that's what we're going to look at in the next few videos. What I'd like to call your attention to first in this video is Handicap and Fun Mode. If you click on this button that says Handicap and Fun, you get a uh, bunch of sliders that you can use to change the way Fritz plays. To basically, and I'm not using this term in a pejorative sense, but to kind of dumb it down. To, to make it play somewhat less ferociously at a, at a lower level that maybe you have a better chance to get a competitive game out of it. Playing strength slider up here is, is the key thing right here you want to look at. The default is a, a rating of 1600. That's 1600 feet A, by the way. So, for example, if you were a 1600 USCF rated player and set this, left this at 1600, it would actually be playing at about 100 points stronger than you because USCF ratings tend to be a little bit inflated compared to feed A ratings. This program is produced in Germany, so this is a feed A rating. So if you slide this the whole way to the left, you get a range of numbers, and they will differ from computer to computer, depending on your hardware. 1375 is as low as it will go on this computer, which is actually about a about a uh, 1200. I'm sorry, about a 1400 USCF player. 1450, 1475, around there. So set it for 1375 if you're a 1375 USCF player and you're playing somebody who's a little bit stronger than you, but not so strong that he's going to destroy you every game. So that's what the playing strength slider does. You get a range. The current strength is always the middle number. The low numbers if you slide it the whole way to the left. The high numbers if you go the whole way to the right. There are other sliders here. You can look in the help file to find out what each one of these does. I'm not going to cover them individually. What I want to point out to you, though, is a bunch of buttons here on the side, which are different little characters that the programmers have set up for you to play against. For example, you click the Potzer button, and this gives you a change in the way the sliders are, are set so the program will play differently. If you will pick Steamroller, it makes it a little bit tougher. 
strong king's attack, doesn't worry too much about its own defense, uh, doesn't make too many blunders, plays at about 1800 level, reckless, the sliders change. But you can pick these individual buttons here and get these little characters that you can play against and try to get a competitive game out of the software where you're not going to get killed every time. Don't be afraid to use this. I use it a bunch and I've been playing this game for 50 years and I have no problem with saying handicap in fun mode. Doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me they put a little picture of a clown in the corner. I'm not terribly insulted. The reason I would click on this button would be to get a somewhat more competitive game rather than have the program go full bore against me every time I play it. There are other handicap modes, there are other more friendly modes in this software where you can get a good competitive game without getting ripped up every time by the software, and we'll look at them in the next couple of videos. Until then, for USCFSales.com, I'm Steve Lopez. Thank you for watching.